Okay, all right, so every once in a while when we're looking for automotive and supercar news, uh, we come across something that's just a little bit weird. Yes, today we're gonna be discussing uh, why Ford has decided to make a gas-scented cologne, and, and the reason is stranger than you might think, as weird as that sounds. Ooh, it's a formidable scent. <laughs> stings the nostrils. Welcome to Life Apollos, guys. Uh, happy to have you here. We got a full slate today uh, per usual. We're gonna start with the weird stuff with Ford first, and then we're gonna move on to some uh, to some other interesting automotive news and try to bring it to you in a timely fashion. And as always, guys, make sure to sub to the channel if you like up-to-the-minute automotive and supercar community news. Uh, working every day for all of you. And with that, Beard Nation, welcome to the show. Uh, let's go find some gas cologne. Brian, I'm gonna be honest with you. That smells like pure gasoline. All right, guys, there were a number of articles on this particular store, but I think The Drive probably had the best one. Uh, the title is Ford's mach -U. I think it's mach -U cologne, is for the EV owners who miss engine smells. Nothing says this is a Mustang quite like the combination of lavender, ginger, and whatever animal is supposed to be. Uh, this apparently a picture of the new cologne. Uh, one of the strangest things I think I've ever seen. And the reason is just so bizarre and feeds into everything that we've been talking about, about like sort of EV adoption over the last couple of months, uh, forced or not. So James Gilboy is the person who did this article, uh, thanks to James. To most people, the Ford Cologne is the 4.0 liter V6 from the 2000s Explorer and Ranger. To those who attended the not so Alpina friendly Goodwood Festival of Speed last weekend, however, it's it's also some weird marketing stunt by Ford to sell Mustang Mach-E's. How? By reminding people of all the smells they'll miss out on if they give up their gas cars. Okay then. This has gotta be just one of the weirdest things I've ever seen Ford do, but it feeds into like that EV adoption thing all over the place, guys. Uh, this counterintuitive campaign came as a result of uh, a survey that determined that 70% of drivers would, after buying an electric vehicle, would miss the smell of gas, with a fifth reporting that they'd, with a fifth reporting that'd be what they'd miss most. I guess I'm not really surprised. There is some sort of uh, connection that we feel with uh, the smell of gas with our cars. I mean, I definitely have it on the straight pipe vehicles we own currently. I totally get it. But how Ford came to this decision to make a Mach-E or Mach-E cologne is just bizarre. Uh, the smell of gas is apparently one the public finds enjoyable, ranking it up alongside the smell of new books and higher than either wine or cheese. Okay, I'm not really sure I agree with that one. Uh, I'm not really looking to take a big whiff of gas every time I, I want something enjoyable, but whatever works for you. Uh, to tie the Mach-E back to the original Mustang via scent or something, Ford commissioned fragrance consultancy, I can't pronounce this, Olfiction, uh, to come up with the cologne that replicates the scent of an old car with something living in it. Uh, I mean, the presentation is just fantastic. I love it on my mantle, but good God, I'd never open it, I don't think. Uh, to do this, uh, that particular company's, along with the British Society of Perfumers, combined the smell of gas with an almond-like smell in interiors and paracresol? Paracresol? I can't pronounce that. Uh, which is apparently a major component in the scent of a tire. Lovely. This just sounds like a winner. <laughs> There's a picture of a kid smelling it. Oh, Lord. Uh, long that enhanced the perfume's metallic, rubbery, and smoky characteristic to the set of organic scents, specifically blue ginger, geranium, lavender, and sandalwood. That sandalwood sounds lovely. She also added something described only as animal, <laughs> presumably meaning the smell of leather or an animal it's made from and not the smell of a wet dog. Uh, wow, this is lovely. What a great picture. Uh, that's actually from Goodwood this year. That's great. Looks like he's having a great time. Uh, Ford showcased the resulting fragrance last weekend at Goodwood handing out scent infused strips to help dispel myths about electric cars and convince traditional car enthusiasts of the potential of electric vehicles. Why do they think that's gonna work at all? I don't understand <laughs> at all. And the drive gets it too. It's hard to imagine imitating the smell of combustion engine cars is going to help sell EVs, uh, though it won't do much to hinder EV adoption either. Either way, don't get too excited because Ford's won't be selling bottles of the stuff anyway. Oh, that's kind of sad. 
uh, another uh, brilliant smell test here in pictures. Um, the reason why we brought this up is even if it's only like a marketing stunt, um, it's just bizarre. Like all the people, all the different companies that want you to buy EVs, the things that they're trying to do to ease you into buying one just kind of blow my mind a little bit. But hey, I'll give Ford credit. Uh, it got us talking about Ford and it got us talking about their EVs, uh, the Mustang Mach-E's. So I, I suppose that's a great thing. Mission accomplished from their marketing team. It just seems a little bit strange. Anyway, let me know in the comments below, what do you think about the new Mach-E uh, GT Cologne? Uh, would you buy it if they sold it? Uh, I don't know, it's a weird story. We thought we'd bring it to you guys. Anyway, on to our next one. Next up guys, from Jalopnik, uh, just another indicator of how insane uh, the used and new car market is in the United States in particular right now. Uh, we're talking about Toyota 4Runners, not something we would typically talk about on the channel, uh, but it illustrates a really great point about how insane things have gotten. Uh, the title is, you will not believe the markups this dealer is putting on Toyota 4Runners. They want you to know it's because of limited availability. Now I'm gonna say this right now. Um, I don't blame dealerships for marking up cars to crazy amounts. If people are willing to buy it, honest exchange of goods, uh, if someone's willing to buy it, why wouldn't you sell it at the highest price? Um, you know, yay capitalism. But hey, I, I just wanted you guys to see how crazy things have gotten. Uh, the car market is so screwed up right now. The combination of chip shortage, shortage of used cars has led to previously unimaginable prices. Uh, dealers can't get their hands on product and some see this as an opportunity to cash in. Uh, apparently a Reddit user pointed out that a Long Island Toyota dealership, a millennial Toyota, is trying to get as much as they can out of customers shopping for a 4Runner. So just so you guys know sort of the base prices here, um, they have a following. It's no surprise that Toyota sold 130,000 of them last year. It's a crazy number. A lot of owners actually use them as intended, which is why Toyota gave it four different TRD trims. Uh, Off-road is 40K, uh, Off-road Premium 43K, and the Pro for 50K. That's brand new. Uh, that's before the markup though. So what do we have here? So they have five forerunners in stock and all three of them have markups. This one has a markup of $23,000 for limited availability, up to 75K over that. Pretty insane. Uh, the MSRP is 52,000. Uh, they want $23,000 markup. That's Lexus money. Um, if somebody buys it, they're doing a smart thing. Luna Rock availability. There's another one for 82,000. It's getting pretty crazy here though. Exterior color of Luna Rock. Uh, and apparently there's a third one as well. Good God though. I mean, I guess if you're trying to buy a Toyota 4Runner, uh, maybe wait a little bit until the car market has calmed down. Um, we had another article and now I can't remember for the life of me what we were gonna talk about today uh, in terms of that article, but it looks like we're gonna have at least six to nine more months of sort of crazy car prices uh, before that starts to come down. That would be in line with the chip shortage uh, continuing for the recent or for the upcoming future. Um, this is just sort of our, our new, I guess, reality for the moment. Um, what do you guys think about used car prices? Are, are you letting it sort of stop you from buying a new car right now? Are you waiting and trying to sell cars you don't need? I'd be curious to know, but uh, things are getting crazy out there to be sure. And last up today, guys, from Car and Driver, uh, bad news if you'd ordered a Rivian R1T launch edition, those deliveries have been delayed until September. Uh, I was actually super pumped about this because they were supposed to be here earlier uh, and I was looking forward to some great YouTube content. I know some people that are getting them. Uh, the electric pickup from the new EV startup was supposed to arrive in customers' hands this month, uh, getting pushed back uh, up until September of 2021. Uh, customers who ordered the Rivian R1T Launch Edition will have to wait a bit longer than planned. The first deliveries of this new electric pickup truck were initially scheduled for July, but will now take place in September uh, 2021, as reported by Automotive News and confirmed by Rivian themselves. Uh, the launch edition model pictured, he starts at, the launch edition model uh, pictured here starts at $73,000, uh, comes in a special green paint color and has its own badging. How funny is it, the guys, that we're talking about $73,000 for a launch edition Rivian, that's the same price as the Toyota 4Runner we were just talking about a minute ago. Uh, <laughs> it's a weird thing. Rivian's website says that reservations for this model are full and all launch edition models will have an estimated 300 mile driving range. A larger battery pack with claimed 400 miles of range is coming later and will cost 10,000 extra. 
Uh, I'm curious, do you guys like what the Rivian styling is? I think it looks fantastic. It looks uh, mostly like a normal truck, except the front of the car, obviously a little bit more futuristic and in line with the, the way that most uh, auto manufacturers from like Porsche to, to Rivian are sort of styling their cars. Uh, electric sort of means futuristic for most of them in terms of styling, uh, but I like it. I'm excited to see what this is gonna look like when people actually get their hands on it now in September, unfortunately. Uh, put in the comments below, guys, what do you think about Rivian? Do you think they'll actually be a competitor for the maybe someday cyber truck uh, getting out there before uh, Tesla gets theirs out. Let me know. And folks, that's all I've got for you guys in terms of automotive news today. Uh, but if you stuck around till the end of the story, I do want to ask a very important question uh, with my car collection to you. Uh, so I put an Instagram poll up, I think like two days ago, asking if we should buy a Lotus Amira and do a build on it instead of the, uh, the, the R8 and I think it was the MSX, the newer version. Uh, I could save a ton of money uh, with the Lotus Amira and it might be kind of cool because no one's done anything with that car. It's not even out yet. Uh, I saw this one render that just like blew my mind and it made me think about the different possibilities we could have with that car. So I just got on a list uh, for interest for my Lotus dealer uh, here in Denver. So I, we're definitely interested, but I wanna get your guys' take on it. If enough people want us to get it, we'll make that the, the most likely car we're gonna buy here over the next couple months slash year, whenever the Amira comes out. Uh, but I love it. I think the styling looks like kind of like a baby Ferrari 488 uh, for a fraction of the cost. Uh, and the performance numbers are pretty in line with like what like a Porsche uh, Cayman would be. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Just something to kind of like stew on a little bit at the end of our episode. Thanks for watching today. Uh, let me know what you think of the Ford Cologne. And uh, that's all I got for today, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Make sure to stay safe, sane, and healthy. I'm out.